good evening all welcome to the new session we will try to discuss uh, cns uh, gbms and cns lymphomas in this uh, differentiating point series we will try to give more emphasis on different subtypes of gbm or variants and lymphoma subtypes and variants and how to differentiate between these two in primarily in cns uh, happy raksha bandhan and happy onam to all my subscribers so here you can see this is the first case where you can see this is the hyper intense lesion you can see predominantly in the spina of carpus callosum even extending into the adjacent pericolosal area with adjacent perilesional edema which is hypo intense on t1 hyper intense on flare and even showing intermediate restricted diffusion on dwa but here you can see on iv contrast there is thick irregular uh, enhancement noted within the wall thick irregular ring like enhancement noted within the wall of the lesion with central necrosis so on spectroscopy you can see there are choline creatinine peaks with reduced na so this was a case of glioblastoma multiforme so what are the other type of glioblastoma multiforme commonly we encounter is butterfly glioma or gbm here you can see the lesion is noted in the janu comma rostrum of carpus callosum extending along the carpus callosum into the frontal lobes in the form of a butterfly fashion so which is showing patchy restricted diffusion on dwa hyper intense on t2 and flare with adjacent perilesional edema focal areas of blooming on gre noted suggestive of hemorrhage on iv contrast you can see typically there is peripheral thick irregular rind of enhancement with central necrosis so this was a case of butterfly glioma next we will try to see other uh, types of glioblastomas here you can see there is a hyper intense lesion noted in the periventricular location even in the occipital lobe which is infiltrating into the atrium and occipital of left lateral ventricle which is hyper intense on flare with adjacent perilesional edema and there is choline creatinine increased so this is nothing but glioblastoma nos so glioblastoma nos is not other specified which is recent uh, diagnosis in the current 2021 who classification of cns tumors which denotes a diffuse glioma with astrocytic features and anaplasia as most glioblastoma nos are is are actually glioblastoma idh wild type so remember this entity that is glioblastoma nos not other specified thanks to dr veel nematala for contributing these cases next we will try to see other other variant which is nothing but gliomatosis cerebri which is a uncommon growth pattern of diffuse gliomas that involves at least three lobes so here also you can see this is a diffuse infiltrative lesion which is hyper intense on uh, flare here also you can see there is a diffuse infiltrative lesion on the left cerebral hemisphere extending into the capsogonic region even infiltrating the brain stem and reaching into the infratentorial location here also you can see there is a diffuse infiltrative lesion noted in the bilateral capsogonic regions extending into the right frontal lobe bilateral temporal lobes and even into the brain stem so this glomerulus cerebri is uncommon growth pattern of diffuse gliomas that involves at least three lobes which has frequent bilateral growth and may extend into infratentorial structures this is nothing but a glial neoplasm with diffuse brain infiltration but relative preservation of underlying neuronal architecture so remember glomerulus cerebri next what we have to include in the radiology report when we are reporting a glioblastoma the morphology we have to include is size in three dimensions presence and degree of central necrosis non enhancing tumor involving cortex deep gray white matter and look at the adc for low values relationship or involvement of eloquent areas major white matter tracts and large vessels extension should be reported across the midline into the brain stem subperitoneal spread or csf dissemination these should be included in our radiology report when we are reporting glioblastoma next we will try to see some other uh, cns uh, lymphomas which are close differentials for glioblastoma multiforme so here you can see there is hyper intense lesion uh, noted in the spina of carpus callosum with adjacent pericolosal extension which is nothing but showing restricted diffusion on dwa with low adc values and which is iso to hypo intense on t2 weighted imaging and showing intense homogeneous enhancement after giving contrast only few areas of necrosis are noted so this is a primary carpus callosal lymphoma in a immunocompetent patient here you can see there is a elevated choline peak with reduced na so and typically it shows the subependymal spread so it lesion will be typically in the periventricular location and typically it will show uh, that is subependymal spread and typically the lesion will show restricted diffusion on dwa with low adc values uh, thanks to dr manish jeshwal for contributing this case 
Next, we'll try to see other primary CNS lymphoma, which is nothing but in, in immunocompromised patient. Here also you can see the lesion is hyperdense on CT in the periventricular location with subependymal spread and showing which is heterogeneously hyperintense on T2 with adjacent perlesional edema and even showing intense heterogeneous enhancement in necrosis. So the same primary CNS lymphoma may also show necrosis with heterogeneous enhancement in immunocompromised patient. So we'll try to see the differentiation between of lymphoma in immunocompetent and immunocompromised patients. As we have already seen, multiple lesions are common in immunocompromised. Necrotic changes are common in immunocompromised. The C, uh, on CT, both uh, lymphoma on immun is hyperdense on immunocompetent or immunocompromised patients. Hemorrhage is usually uncommon in immunocompetent patient, but it is common in immunocompromised patient. Enhancement will be homogeneous in immunocompetent patient, but it will be heterogeneous in immunocompromised patients, as we have seen in previous case. So this is the important differentiation slide, which is which forms the gist of this lecture. So we'll try to differentiate CNS lymphoma from glioblastoma multiforme. So age uh, greater than 50 years is common in CNS lymphoma, greater than 40 years in GBM. May, common in males, both lymphoma and glioblastoma are common in males. Uh, and it will be typically iso hypo CNS lymphoma will be hypointense on T1, iso to hypointense on T2, whereas glioblastoma multiforme is hypointense on T1 but hi hyperintense on T2. And enhancement we can see as we have already seen, there is intense homogeneous enhancement in CNS lymphoma. There will be heterogeneous enhancement with necrosis and hemorrhage in glioblastoma multiforme and irregular rind like enhancement in glioblastoma multiforme. Diffusion weighted imaging CNS lymphoma will show typically restricted diffusion with low ADC values. Whereas uh, GBM, they, they, these lesions will be hyperintense to gray matter on both DW and ADC maps, consistent with elevated diffusivity. Increased choline creatinine ratio, decrease NAA lactate peak in CNS lymphomas. Choline is increased lipid lactate peak and decrease NAA in, and decrease myonositol in GBM. Hemorrhage is absent in lymphoma. Hemorrhage is commonly present in GBM. Optic pathways infiltrated is seen in CNS lymphoma, not usually seen in GBM. Cranial nerves are usually affected in lymphoma, not affected in GBM. Basal ganglia involvement is common in lymphoma, less common in glioblastoma multiforme. And signs, not sign is seen in lymphoma, whereas butterfly pattern are seen in carpus callosum. Steroid response, highly vanishing lesions or ghost tumors are common in lymphoma, which, whereas GBMs are non-responsive. Radio sensitivity is also CNS lymphoma is highly sensitive, whereas GBMs are less sensitive. And even relative cerebral blood volume, as we have seen in perfusion weighted imaging, is more more in case of uh, GBM, but it is less in case of lymphomas. Diffusion tracted imaging, that is fraction anisotropy and ADC of lymphomas, are significantly lower than GBM. So these are the few differentiating points which help in differentiating CNS lymphoma from glioblastoma multiforme. So these are different subtypes of lymphomas. You can pause the slide and see. We will try to see two different important variants, that is intravascular angiocentric lymphoma and lymphomatosis cerebri. So this is intravascular or angiocentric lymphoma. Here you can see there is a lesion is hyperintense predominantly in the capsulogalic region showing patchy restricted diffusion redoubly. On IV contrast you can see there is punctate enhancement, punctate or linear enhancement along the vessels and also which is showing enhancement along the perivascular spaces. So this is classical of uh, intravascular or angiocentric lymphoma. Next, we will try to see other lymphoma which is nothing but lymphomatosis cerebri. You can see the lesion is hyperintense on uh, flare and also on T2 which is involving bilateral frontal, temporal and even occipital lobes showing intense heterogeneous enhancement which is more marked or prominent in delayed scans. So this was a case of 21 year old with lymphomatosis cerebri which is a variant of lymphoma. Next, why it is called as ghost tumor? Because uh, typically we can see these are the hyperdense lesions in the bilateral capsular region. After steroid therapy, after, after 10 days, the lesions have completely disappeared. That's why it is called vanishing tumor or ghost tumor, that is lymphoma. Next, north sign. North sign is nothing but a focal deep depression seen at the margin of the lesion. This is the focal deep depression seen at the margin of the lesion. Here, this is the focal deep depression seen at the margin of the lesion in primary CNS lymphoma. Thanks to Dr. Sharath Kumar sir for contributing this case. Next, lymphomas are usually hyperdense on computer tomography. This is a, these are single lesions which are typically hyperdense on CT. These are multiple lesions which are typically in the periventricular location with subependymal spread which are hyperdense on CT. So there are other lesions which can also mimic or uh, confuse our, our differential diagnosis of lymphoma. So this is a single lesion of lymphoma. These are the multiple lesions of lymphoma which are hyperdense on CT. So what are the other differential diagnoses of lymphoma which are similarly hyperdense on CT? 
which can be hemorrhage, gliomas or carcinomatosis, vascular malformations, AVM, aneurysm or cavernomas, ventriculitis, uh, ventriculitis or ependymitis, periventricular calcified granulomas or calcified nodules or tubers as SEGA that is seen in tuberous sclerosis, periventricular heterotopic gray matter, intracranial germinomas, meningiomas and metastasis. Next, so what are the common differential diagnosis which typically mimic either the lymphoma or, the, or uh, GBMR? Uh, we are trying to see the differential diagnosis of primary CNS lymphoma is nothing but secondary CNS lymphoma which is indistinguishable on imaging but however it involves morely leptomeninges than parenchyma and mostly non adjacent lymphoma and meningeal dural cranial nerve enhancement is common in secondary lymphomas. Toxoplasmos also can mimic lymphomas but they are typically they do not show subapendable spread and typically is seen in basal ganglia or corticometallic junction and may show eccentric target or concentric target appearance. CNS lymphoma is uh, thallium pet avid whereas toxoplasmos or not. Butterfly glymos are already seen. We have seen central necrotic areas and hemorrhages and typically grow in butterfly fashion. Metastasis is multiple lesions predominantly like corticomedular junction. Tubifactor MS or ADM are seen in younger patients with open ring type of enhancement. Cerebral abscess which has show peripheral enhancement of primary CNS lymphoma which is thicker than abscess and even restricted diffusion is seen in abscess and dual rim sign is seen on SWI imaging. Neurosarcoidos also can also mimic lymphomas but they will be focal enhancing parenchymal mass with enhancement along the perivascular spaces and adjacent meningeal enhancement. Thank you all.